Okay, this is Excel module one. Okay, let's scroll down here and then let's try this practice review assignments for this Excel module one. Okay, first of all, we need to create a new blank worksheet, workbook, and then save that file as this. So why don't we open open a word? I'm a, uh, I'm sorry, Excel. So open blank workbook, blank workbook. All right, and then save the file as okay, I will, uh, in this PC. Okay, let me navigate to my working folder, which is in C drive. And then CS103 homework. Okay, the file name is, okay, look at this. The extension is Excel workbook, Excel SX. It has to be Excel SX. The file name is NP underscore EX1 underscore equipment. Okay, so make sure this is Excel workbook. Okay, and then save it. So we just saved a blank, blank uh, Excel workbook. So let's let's follow each step. Okay, rename the worksheet, uh, the sheet one. Okay, we want to rename the sheet here. So you can double click this name, then you can change the name, the documentation. Or you can right click, right click on this worksheet, tab, and then you can select rename. And then rename the worksheet. Okay, number three. Number three is we will fill out, okay, here it is. Okay, we want to fill out this information. So let me open a little bit, make it larger. Okay, so here. Okay, A1, the cell A1 means Okay, the worksheet is composed of rows and columns. The columns and rows. The column has alphabet A, B, C, D, and the row number is in uh, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So A1 means column A, row 1. So A1, the cell address A1 should contain M, E, D, I, T, A. And then A3, okay, A3 is the cell A column, row number 3. Okay, this is A3. Type author, and then A4 is date, A5 is purpose, and then B, B3. Okay, B3 is column B, third row, and your name. So my name is this one, and your name, you have to write your name, not my name. And then B4 is current date. Okay, for the current date, you can type 9 slash. Okay, today's date, so let's say 29, then this will automatically convert to date. But uh, we want, we don't want this, uh, this date. We want to change the date format. So click, uh, click this arrow in the number group. So we want to make it short date. So it looks like this. Okay, and then the purpose is, okay, we need to type this information. That is in B5. Okay, so in B5, type that information like this. Okay. And then, oh shoot. Okay, I accidentally closed this, uh, this ebook. Okay, so number four, number four is set the size of the title text. So this is title text, A1, okay, A1, so select, select the cell A1, and then change the font size to 24, so click this arrow, and then 24. Okay, number five, set the width of column B, so column B is this one, this is column B, so we want to send, change the width. This is how you can change easily, okay, click the right boundary, and then drag it, drag it to the right, left so you can change the width so as you change the width you know the width length is can you see the width length is also changing so we want to change this width uh to be uh, 32 characters okay 32 characters is so we don't know what the 32 character exact like 32 character is so you can do it this way right click on the column b so letter b right click on the letter b then you can change the column width here is the column width so the column with the 32 characters, so type 32. 
Okay, so if you move your mouse cursor over here, then this will show you 32. So click it, click here, it will be 32. So make sure, just follow the instruction 32. Okay. And then uh, add borders around all of the cells from okay, range. This one says range A3 to B5. That means starting from the cell A3, so click A3. And then drag it all the way up to B5. So click the first cell and then drag it and then release the mouse button. So we selected the range A3 to B5. And then we want to put borders in each cell. So here is the border. Do you remember the border button? So this is similar to Word. So we can select all borders. So select all borders means you know there will be a border on in each in each cell like this. Okay, number seven. Okay, we want to add. Uh, are we done? Not yet. Okay, and then number seven, we will add worksheet here. So click the plus button in the bottom. So we have a worksheet number two, and then double click this worksheet so we can change the worksheet name. Equipment expenses. Okay, and then hit enter. Okay, and then set the font size of the title text. Uh, okay, and then A1, sorry, A1. In A1, type Mad IT Conference Equipment expenses okay and then select this a1 again so select outside and select a1 again and we want to change the font size to 20 20 points select the font size area size arrow and then select 20. okay just like the previous sheet we will enter all this information Okay, so let me enlarge the table. Okay, so A1, A4. Okay, A4 is equipment categories. A5, you know, if you hit enter, then you will move to the next row. A5, total expenses. A7, so hit twice. Vendor, enter, street address, and then A9 is city, A10 is state, A11 is postal code, A12 is phone. So type, and then B7. Okay, B7 is here, conference. Connection, connections, and then B8 is 480, technology lane, and then B9 is Boston, B10, Massachusetts, and then Z number is 0. 2155 phone number 617 555 all right so once you enter this look at this okay a4 okay a4 is one the this is equipment equipment categories and then this one displays all the way in this row but address this is address at uh street address but since we have a b contents in b b8 the street address does not show you know all the way in this cell okay so if we have a cell on the next date then the contents in the previous cell will not be displayed all of them okay and the next so go to the previous number 10 get okay, done number 14 Okay, cell F14. I'm sorry. 
not not yet, number 10. Okay, here. Okay, this is a okay, range A14 to E20. A A14. Equipment parts. Okay, so starting from A14. Here, this is A14, right? A14. So we're gonna enter all this information. So enlarge it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should have this one, but this one does not show our table. And there's something wrong with this one. Okay, so let me find out why this one is happening. Okay, let me click this and then open it. Still the same. All right, here you go. I had to uh, open it again. So, okay, before we do this, we I mistyped here. Okay, the phone number B12 should be 617 parenthesis and not zero. Okay, change this one. Okay, so A14. Okay, A14 will be equipment, equipment, uh, sorry, sorry, expense category, category, and then sub category, description, and then A15 is E2. Okay, look at this. We have a more uh, more columns, so why don't we type the title first? So after the description, so E14, E14 should be units, and then so the D14, D14 is unit, E14 is cost per unit. Okay. So let's let's we have to type all all this information. So E2. So how many E2s here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So type E2 six times. Two, three, four, five, six times. And then in B15, type 5010, 5020, 5030, 50, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 56. Okay, the seal 50. Cell 15, uh, C15 is description, computer, workstation, rental. So why don't you type all this information? Okay, so once you type it, okay, let me scroll this one to the right. So let's enter the information for unit and cost per unit. So click, click D, D15. Then type 25, 10, enter, 10, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter. Click the cell E15 and type K10500. Okay, zero, zero, zero. okay, you can you can type 105. We will change this one later. 105. Okay, don't type the dollar sign because we can change it. We can change the numbers. Okay, and then let me scroll this one to the left. All right. Okay, so E14. Okay, F14, so F14, type on the, so click F14, number 11, F14, type total. And then in the range F15 to F20, so select F15 and then drag it to F20. So you selected this range. And then okay, calculate the total cost of each equipment item by entering formulas. So we want to enter a formula to calculate the total cost. Okay, so that is the total cost will be the number of units multiplied by cost per unit. So this is how you can do it. So select F15, select F15, and then enter equal sign, equal sign. So the total cost will be the product of number of units 
So click this D15, and then, it, then D15 will be automatically displayed here, and then, and then star, type star. Okay, star means multiply. Okay, star means multiply, and then select E15. So this means we will multiply two values. So those two values are from the cell D15 and E15. Okay, and hit enter. So this is the total amount. And then what we can do, okay, we will repeat this one for the other cells. But this is, you don't have to repeat it because we want to just copy the formula. Copy this formula. Okay, so hit uh, escape. Uh, escape. So this is how you can uh, copy. So in the lower right corner of this cell, move your mouse lower right corner. Then the icon changes to plus sign. Then click and then drag it down like this. All right. So if we click the first cell, the first cell is D15 times E15. As you copy down, you know, if you copy the formula down, then the row number changes. So, okay, E15, E16. Okay, this cell has the formula D16, E16, right? E16. And next, okay, escape. Okay, I will put it, I will press escape key. Okay, and then this cell, F15, F17, this F17, right? So this will contain row 17, right? Row 17. And next one, 18, next one, 19. So as you copy down, as you copy down, the row number changes. The row number is increased by one. Okay, the row number increased. So we're starting from E15, uh, 15, right? Row 15. So next row will be 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, this is autofill. We call it autofill. All right. Okay, number E, okay, E22. So E22 is this one, this cell. So E and E22, enter subtotal. Okay, and F22. Okay, we will use the function called sum. Okay, sum function to calculate the sum of all these values. Sum of all these values. So select F. 22 and then we will use this sum key okay, this is sum key so press the sum arrow there are some uh, some formulas like this we will select sum okay, sum then it will automatically select you know the up uh, the uh, the cells above so why don't we select starting from a 15 to a 20 a 15 to a 20 then automatically uh, this F20 to F20, F15 to F20. Automatically, you know, types, displays the cell number. Okay, this column means, column means starting from the cell F15 all the way up to F20. So column means, you know, between. All right, and then hit enter. So this is the sum of all these values. Okay, in cell E13. Okay, E13. E13 is this, E13 is this one, right, E13, okay, type tax rate, okay, and then F13, F13, enter 3%, so 3%, okay, then next, E23, Okay, number 14. So E23 is this one. So select E23, then type estimated tax. Okay, and then F23. Okay, calculate the estimated tax by entering a formula that multiplies subtotal. So we want to multiply, uh, we will multiply the subtotal value, this one in F22 by the tax rate, F13. So in F23, in F23, type equal sign. So whenever you use a function, you have to put equal sign, okay, equal sign. 
And this estimate tax will be the product of F22. So select F22 and then multiply by so type asterisk and then select the cell F13. So this is 3% of subtotal. 3% of subtotal. So it will be 176 something. Okay, misspell here, subtotal, not total, subtotal. All right, and then next, in F24, F24, E24, the cell E24, type total, and then F24, select cell F24, and then we will make a sum, so use the sum function. So why don't we click the sum arrow, just click the sum you know, icon, sum icon. So this will be the sum of the subtotal and the estimated tax. Okay. And then hit enter. Okay, number 16. Okay, insert new cells in the range 813 to 824. So 813 is this one. Okay, so why don't you select A13 and then A24. Select this range, A13 to A24. And then we want to insert, uh, you know, insert insert a column. The, actually, it's a column, right, cell? Shifting the cells to the right. So right-click on this selected cell and then insert. So we want to, we want to, we will shift cells to the right so we can insert in you know, a cells right before this one. Okay, so we just inserted in you know, a cells by shifting others to the right. Okay, number in cell A14, A14 type enter account ID and then A15. Okay, enter E2-550 as the first ID, and then A16 is E2-5020, and so on. E2-5030, and so on, right? You know, as you type it, you need, it automatically filled out the information like this. Okay. And then uh, I think this one should be, uh, this one just follow this information. So why don't we just leave it as this, okay? Okay, and then, okay, so this is called, you know, flash field, a flash field. Okay, number 18, add the borders around all the cells in this range, so F13, G13, uh, F13 to G13. So F13 is this one, and then all the way up to G13 uh, here. So we want to select a uh, multiple multiple ranges. So so once you select these two cells, hold down the control key, hold down the control key, and select A14 to G20. A14 to G20 like this. Okay, keep holding down the control key. And then select F20, F22 to F22 to G24. Okay, so we selected three ranges like this by by uh, by holding down the control key, and then we will okay, apply borders or borders. So okay, this one actually this one. So click the border arrow. The all borders. So select all borders and then click any place. So we just included all the borders in each cell. And number 19. Set the width of column A. So write down, okay, column A and B to be 22 characters. So why don't we select, click, click A and B. So select A and B, drag it. So click the first, the column A and then drag it to B. So we selected two cells. And then right click, we want to change the column width, the width is 22 and then OK. So each cell is 
has with 22 characters. All right, then let's set the uh, other columns, column width. So select C, E, F, G. So click the letter C column and hold down the control key, C, E, F, G. So you can select multiple columns and then right, down, uh, right click on the selected uh, column, column letter and then select column width. The column width is 13 characters. Okay. And then column D. So right, uh, right click on the column D. And then the width is 24 characters. Okay. And then this part, the row height. So the row number 13. So clear row number 13. Then right click on this 13. Then we will select the row height. Okay. The row height. This time it is 30 points. Okay, the row height is not character, it's in points. So 30 points. Okay, number 22. Okay, wrap the text. So select the range D15 to D20. Okay, wrap text means, wrap text means, you know, all the contents will display in one cell. So if, if the content is long, so it cannot be displayed in one cell, then you can wrap the text. So this is the wrap text button. So wrap text, so click this wrap text. So the first, so this cell D15 was long, right? Was long, so all the contents now can can be uh, displayed in one cell. Okay, and then B4. Okay, B4. Okay, B4 show uh, for this equal number number of uh, categories, equivalent categories. Okay, so in this cell B4, we will display the we will use count function so that we will count the number of cells in this range D15, E20. I'm sorry, E15. So E15 is this one and E20 is this. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six cells. Six cells contains numbers. So we want to count the number of cells that contains uh, numbers. So here's the count function. So equal sign equal sign and then type count. So as you type count, this shows the function name starting with count. So this function counts uh, will give you, this will count the number of cells in a selected range that contains numbers. So this is the function name that we will use. Okay, count A. Count A counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So even there is a text, you know, they will be counted. So as long as it is, if cell does, does not contain an empty cell, you know, empty. So if a cell is not empty, then it will be counted. If we use A. So in this case, we will use count function and the open parenthesis and close parenthesis. So always there's an equal sign. Then here's a function name and then open parenthesis and close parenthesis. So between open and close parenthesis, we will select ranges. So the range will be E15 to E20. So make sure E15 to E20 is between these two parentheses. So let's say if you didn't put right parentheses and hit enter. So if you hit enter, then this will automatically enter you know, the closing parentheses. So if I double click this cell again, so as you see this, the close parenthesis added automatically. So this will count the number of cells that contains numbers in this range and they are six. There are six cells. Okay, we will do a similar thing. Uh, well, not a similar one. Okay. In B5, okay, B5 is total expense. So this will, okay, the B5 will display the total expense. The total expense is in G24, this one. So G24, the value in G24 will be displayed in this B5. So this is how you can assign the value to this cell. So equal sign, just use equal sign. Equal sign means whatever the value on the right side will display in this cell. So this will display the result of G24, right? G24, is it G24? 
the total sale is the the, the sale G24 shows the total amount, total amount, right? So you can click G5 or you can type G5, uh, G24, G24, and hit enter. So this cell, the value in this cell will be also in this cell, D5. So equal sign and the cell address. Equal sign, cell address will display that cell information. Okay, and number 22. Okay, Carmen wants to keep the equipment budget. So look at the budget. Okay, if the budget is less than $6,000, less than $6,000, then within budget, this text will display in B4, B, B3. Will display in B3. Okay, and then if the budget is $6,000 or more, then it will display this text over budget. So over budget will be in this b3 so in this case we will use if function okay if function okay if function is this okay if function is okay equal sign and then type if because if is a function so if put parenthesis and then close parenthesis okay write this between uh Okay, if contains three arguments separated by comma, and the first argument is first argument is logical test. So if this first argument is true, you know if means whether it's true or false, right? So if this is true, then the second argument will be the result. If the first argument is false, the logical test is false, then the third argument will be the result. So the result means that result will be displayed in this cell. So the logical test is this. The total, the total value is in G24, right? G24. So the value in G24, the cell G24 is less than 6,000. So type less than 6,000. Okay, so G24. So G24 now is 6,051, right? So if the, the cell G24 contains, you know, this value is less than 6,000. If this is true, then we will, we will display within budget. So within budget is uh, text, so use double quotes, okay, double quotation, and then type within budget, and then close double quotation. So always, I want to display a text, then the text should be enclosed by double quotes okay double quotes so if this is over okay, not if this is false if this is false that means six thousand or more then this will display over budget over budget so use the double quotes like this okay so we don't need a space so why don't i just remove extra space like this and then hit enter okay so this one displays over budget why because the cell g24 contains more than six thousand okay this is how we can use if function so if you if you want to know more about the if function then please read the textbook or google it okay in Google, search for the keyword if in Excel, then this will explain briefly. All right, number 22. Change the page orientation of this worksheet. Okay. Orientation, you know, landscape type, how do you change it? It's in the layout tab, right? layout. So page layout, orientation, and then select landscape. Okay, so this page is changed to landscape. And then scale width and the height of the worksheet to print on one single page. So look at this. If you see the dotted line here, dotted line means this is page break. So here is one page. So this is one page. And then this is the second page. So we want to we want to change the width and height of the worksheet. 
So in this case, you can do this way. So let me go to the file tab and print. So as you see this, this one has two pages, right? Two pages. So we can make it in one page. So you can do this way. Okay. This is scale, uh, scale to fit. So why don't you click the scale to fit uh, dialog box. Okay, then you can use this one. Fit to, okay. fit to one page. If you select this one, then everything will be fit in one page. So, so all the contents in worksheet that is displayed in one page like this. Okay, or you can do this way. Okay, you can select you know, one page here, and then also the height is one page. You can do this way, or you can also change the scale. So the scale is disabled because we set it into one, to you know, fit to one page. So if you select this one, then you can change the scaling size. So you can make it, you know, 90%, 80%. If it's very long, then you can reduce the scale, like a 60% 60, 60 and so on. So in this case, we will just make it simple. So select fit to one page. Okay. So that is, that's it, right? That's it. So in this case, we learned, uh, we learned some functions. One is if function, right? If, and then count function, right? Count. And then sum function, sum, right? Sum. All right, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't make this one dollar sign, right, dollar. So why don't we select uh, select this range and then this range. So select these ranges and then we will change it, this one, we will put the dollar sign. So click the home tab, home tab and in the number group, select, in this case, let's use currency, okay, click currency. All right, so dollar sign is attached right before the numbers. Okay, and then what else? Give the dollar sign, the numbers. I think this will be okay. All right, that's it. So we will continue more in the case uh, homework. Oh, by the way, I forgot a number five. Okay, number five. Okay, let me go to the documentation. Okay, we need to wrap the contents in B5. So B5 is very large. This this one con contains you know a large information. So why don't we change the format? So this will be wrap text. So all the contents will display in one cell like this. Okay. So I forgot uh, this doing this one. All right, then that's it.